have a date with a blind book. With a blind book? A blind date with a book. <laughs> we have a blind date with a book. Okay, and these are the prompts or the hints. It's a classic, is why I picked it up. Um, it says in the entertainment industry, it's about drugs, which I don't know, but then it says female friendship. We're going to unpack it. It was a risk that I already own it with classic and female friendship. But we'll see. 20 minutes later. Don't be like that. It's so cutely packed. I got this from the book cafe in Zwolle, by the way, if anyone wants to know. Oh, I'm nervous. I hope I don't own it already. Okay, this is a good sign because it's a Furago modern classic and I really like their collection. Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan. I have never heard of this. You don't have that one, I think. No, I don't. Oh yes, that's great. Okay, if you've read this one, let me know if it's good. I'm going to read the back while boy is going to drive because he's annoyed and wanted to do this in the car. Welcome to another reading vlog. I'm about to join some sprints so I don't have long to chat. My February reading is going slow because I made a normal monthly TBR without considering that February is a short month. I've been picking a lot of books with serious themes or books that are just more demanding to read. So I feel like those days that February is missing, I'm really missing. Romola is going great though. I put it away for two days and then it called to me again and I read quite a lot of it last night. I'm now on page 315. I'm making my way through it. I'm definitely going to read this tonight during the sprints. Let's see, my daily pages are... Oh, to finish book two. So I have to read until page 363. So that's, I think, 50 pages. Around 50 pages is doable for me during standard sprints. Although I think these will be a little bit shorter because we're starting later. But if I go through that fast, I'm not the one hosting, so I don't know if we're going to do a lot of chatting and not a lot of sprinting. Like, I don't know, we'll see. But then I can still read Pippi Longstocking. I've kind of been slumping with this one. Because even though I enjoy it, it's not like the kind of book that you want to keep on reading. It's not super captivating. I did read a scene where Pippi is cleaning. And this is the way she does that. And I always wanted to clean like that when I was younger. And it was really wonderful to remember my younger self like that. I think I got so much from Pippi when I was younger. I really wanted to be like her passionately. And I wanted to do all the weird things that she did. The other book I'm reading and also really enjoying. But it's really hard to read because of all the subject matter. It's all about war and I feel like I've never read about war in this way where I can actually imagine slightly myself how it would emotionally feel and I think because women have never described it like this I could never imagine what it was like and also I think every time we read something on the war it is extremely glorified. This book is not at all glorified. I'm talking about the unwomanly face of war and the disconnect from humanity when you know about all of these war crimes how could people possibly do that how is it possible for human beings to do that and i think the answer i'm getting from this book is that when you do that you are not a human being i think those kind of themes are also in novels where people do things during war that they think about later and they just cannot imagine how they would have been able to do that. And I think, oh my gosh, I cannot talk anymore because we're going live in a little bit. But just, it's, it's not a book I can binge, really, because it's it's too hard. Um, and February doesn't have enough days, okay? I, that is the conclusion of this vlog. February does not have enough days. It is Sunday and boy decided to do a little brunch, uh, lunch kind of thing for the family. He went to the supermarket and he got some things. Um, not all of them were allergy friendly. So I made some allergy friendly things that look better than the things that boy got, which is so satisfying, but I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> so this is a little setup of the table. I need to place an extra chair over there, but I love these flowers so much, these tulips, very Dutch. And then boy got some banana bread and we got a lot of fresh bread and some croissants. And I love my little lemon tablecloth um, because the banana bread is not allergy friendly. I got some chocolate chip banana pancakes, which I mean, Let's, let's have a little comparison. Okay, equally delicious. <laughs> Put a little platter of fruit um, in the fridge with some um, strawberries, melon, and mango. And we have some smoothie and some bubbly water. Um, and these are my little gluten-free buns, which is a corn one and just like one with seeds. And I really enjoy these.
old ways get washed out by the rain. Darling, you've got to keep holding on through the night. Cause I promise you. Tuesday morning. I'm getting ready to film my wrap up. I think I'm going to braid my hair in the back because I don't like it to be in the way in my face when I'm filming. I just read two more chapters of Romola. Um, I think I have about 90 pages left so kind of want to finish it today but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to because Romola is not a false read by any means. So I might need tomorrow as well. I am still enjoying it. The politics are slightly boring to me, um, but I do see how it's important because it really is tightly linked to character motivation. You know, I cannot complain about the politics because sometimes I feel like the politics are just fillers. But in Romla, it really matters for the characters at what either binds or divides them. But I do notice that I enjoy the more political chapters less than the chapters that are more plot driven. Um, if you have seen my March TBR, then you know I have a lot of very serious books on there. And I also had quite a lot of serious books on my February TBR. So I decided to just get some mutris in um, that are just a little bit more fun reads. I decided to listen to an audiobook that I had heard so many good things about. Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which um, I just knew it was witchy. But so far, I think I've listened to about two hours of it and it's quite a long audiobook. I think it's the first in a series, but it's set in modern day Ireland, but in a world where um, magic exists, is what I'm getting so far. We follow, I think, four girls. I like the audiobook narrator because it is um, Betty from Bridgerton. Um, she's also in Dairy Girls. So I like. The narration, I think it may be a book that I should read physically because every chapter is from the perspective of different characters. But the first chapter is about girls knowing that something is going to change and I think they know that they are witches. I think they're going to be educated as witches somewhere but we follow them all when they're in their mid-30s later on and they were in their teens in the first chapter. That is what I'm getting so far. It is fun. I like low fantasy where it kind of feels like our world but there are just some magical elements to it. So that's promising. And I also started a graphic novel series that I think is it like the most popular graphic novel series possibly and that is Saga. I read the first, I think it's the first chapter of volume one which I think I am a third of the way through. And this reminds me of um, I think it was written before the series was released, but that is, uh, is it Carnival? Something like that. The Amazon series where you have like the elves and the people with horns, just different magical human creatures. <laughs> just living their life, but in a very dangerous political climate. And I think Saga is also sci-fi because we have like different planets. I'm liking the characters, I think. It is so strongly structured, but the dialogue is a little bit cringe. There are some like sexist parts in there that just feel very uncomfortable. So I can only hope that like the later volumes kind of don't have that anymore. If the structure of the story keeps 
like being so interesting and so well paced and I will I think I will continue with the graphic novel series because I like graphic novels a lot so to get myself through these uh, more serious reads like Romola and the Unruly Face of War. I am finding some more fun reads, which has been great. It is the last day of February though, and I am nowhere near finishing my February TBR because I decided to switch my historical fiction for a historical fiction that had an audiobook because I was definitely way too ambitious with this TBR in a short month, which is fine. <laughs> um, I am considering extending my TBR to two months for March. I think that may be a little bit more realistic, a little bit more chill, and then I can actually read all the books I put on my TBR instead of just putting some back on my shelves. I am really interested in all of them. And then maybe add some more lighter reads in the mix to get through it all. <laughs> I do think I have all my notes ready. I do need my notes when I'm filming a wrap up otherwise I am so annoyed with myself during editing because I just ramble on and on and I like to keep my wrap ups quite short that's just kind of my uh, style I think I'm going to touch up my eyebrows a little bit more and then uh, maybe put in some earrings and I'll go and film my wrap up. Not me totally forgetting to mention that I watched some of the mini series that I bought. I don't regret at all. I was scared that you know you pay a little bit more than you would do for streaming service buying the DVDs, but these are all series that I would re watch. Now I'm going to use this spray which I saw people do and it looks so satisfying and I often have like warm skin especially if I have a migraine. When I wake up from a nap I just spray this on my face and I like wake up and so oh and it smells a little bit in my mouth <laughs> which happens but it smells so good. It's It has like a chamomile and a rose water scent and it's organic so it's not like I'm putting on a lot of perfume on my face. It kind of reminds me of a very subtle green tea spraying on my face. But I watched Cranford and this was so incredibly cozy. Cranford is about two sisters who live in a small town called Cranford and all of the other ladies that they are friends with. And they are hilarious, they are so funny. Um, the first episode is a bit slow and it's just vibing with Cranford, but then a lot of hardship happens. <laughs> the plot is quite heartbreaking, I think. I watched a little bit of behind the scenes of it as well and they added some short stories by Gaskell to Cranford because it's quite a short novel to the series and they did such a good job. They added a lot of characters that had a bit more of a plot driven storyline which I think definitely helped. And then I also watched North and South and you all were right, this is the best mini series book adaptation I have ever seen. I had a little passion cry after every episode. There were only four episodes and I did not love the romance in North and South, but in a miniseries, wow, 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 wow. I think this is a case of the miniseries is better than the book. And I like North and South. It was like a four star for me. But the miniseries is like, can I give 10 stars in a five star rating? Because it's so good. I'm definitely going to watch it again. I was a little bit stupid because I didn't know there was like some kind of second episode or second season of Cranford. There is like Return to Cranford. And I should have bought a DVD set that had all of them. So I just bought Return to Cranford as another DVD. And Middlemarch hasn't come in yet, but I will watch those very soon as well because I'm really, really vibing with these BBC miniseries. I'm enjoying what custom dramas do these days with like Bridgerton and Sanditon. I don't know, they're not like as historically accurate um, with their costumes, with their setting, with their language, which is fine. It's another kind of fun. I I'm missing the more traditional vibe of having it really historically accurate. I don't necessarily love the very static filming of the costume dramas back in the day, like in the 90s. But North and South, I think everything is very accurate, even though the filming is more modern and the storytelling is more modern. Sweet spot, sweet spot. Can we make more series like North and South, please?
So yesterday evening, oh the lighting is really crap. Yesterday evening I finished Romola. So even though I'm still reading The Unwomanly Face of War, it's time to pick some fiction to read. From the Instagram poll, Homegoing One, which is one of the options that I'm in a mood for now. I want something moving, but I want the writing to not be too heavy because I just finished Romola and that was honestly one of the most challenging books I've ever read. I would compare it to how difficult it was, I think, to The Master and Margarita, which was such a satisfying read, but it was very challenging as well. Another one I could read and I don't know about the writing, to be honest. Um, it's a water dancer, but I think I want to read this later in a month, so it's closer to the live show. So that leaves me... Hmm. I could read The Obelisk Gate. The writing isn't easy, but it's definitely easier than the other books I have on my TBR for now. It is between these two, so I think I'm just going to take both of them. And I think I'm going to start with The Obelisk Gate, and if I'm not feeling it, I will switch to this. Yeah, that should be fun. I did a lot of home stuff today. I did film some rerolls, so I'm sure you've seen that already. So I'm pretty exhausted. It felt so great to do. I did different kind of projects. And for once, all of them worked out. Usually when I do multiple things in a day, like one or two of the things I try to do kind of fail. <laughs> um, so I was very grateful for that. Tomorrow I'm going to do more complicated things like I want to install a cat flap in the door that I painted and that might be a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and start reading. Rusty red on her shoulder, I was cleaning her shoe When it clicked on the trot over in the bright morning dew We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed It was a mutual arrangement we both saw in two Can she walk in the fire? Can she run in the rain? Can she make it up the mountainside? It is Monday afternoon. I've been attempting to do a little bit of work this morning, but the fatigue is real the last couple of days, especially this weekend. So I did a little bit of work and now I'm going to do not as much. Oh, I find it so difficult to not do stuff when I know I have things on my to-do list. Yesterday evening, I had a little bit of energy left and I had very specific ingredients. I had two overripe bananas, I had some pineapple, things like that. And they are all ingredients. So a hummingbird cake, apparently, which I found a recipe in Jamie Oliver's cookbook. I had to make it, of course, uh, gluten-free. So it doesn't look perfect. Uh, can you see it? It looks a little bit dense, but that is, I think, because of the banana and because I had to use egg replacer. Vegan cream cheese on top. Like, I'll show you worked out perfectly and I had a little crisis while making that. We had a little bit of it last night, but I feel like the next day is always better. Yeah, it is a little dense. Oh, it's also really sweet, holy moly. I made the sponge in a way that I know how to make it gluten-free and vegan, but maybe I need to add some supplements, some extra things to the sponge to make it better. And I also got myself a coffee, still my Christmas mug because it's Christmas all year round. <laughs> Cake and coffee, honestly, the best thing in the world. I did decide to pick up the Obelisk Gate and I'm now 150 pages exactly through this. I had a hard time remembering the fifth season because I think is it it's not even been a year since I read that one, but I think the world that this is set in, which is set far, far in the future, is so complicated. There are so many characters, I just think the writing of N.K. Jemison, at least in these novels, is complicated, it's hard work. So I watched a video where someone explained the entire plot of the fifth season. And still, I had a hard time with certain characters in this book. I think I've got it now. <laughs> when I finish this, I will definitely read the other one right away as well. Otherwise, I have to do the same thing all over again. I am enjoying this. 
Although the weird thing is that the main character who I adored, loved in the fifth season, I'm not that interested in, in this book. I like the other storylines better. The main thing is, I think the main character talks a lot about science and the science behind the world as it is now. And that feels very dystopian sci-fi-esque. And I think a lot of people will absolutely love that in this book. Those are not buzzwords for me. I don't really enjoy reading sci-fi, which I think this is the most sci-fi-y book or the most sci-fi series I've ever read. Still, I'm having a good time, but I think it will take a while for me to finish this. And then I did finish Saga. I don't think I mentioned that. I ended up giving it three stars. I will continue if I feel like it, but it's definitely not a high priority for me. And I have also been listening to Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is awesome. I am listening to it when I'm like tired or before I go to sleep, so I don't think it's perfect for that. I think I would have preferred reading it physically or having my full attention as like my daytime audiobook because I'm getting characters confused, but I don't think that's a writing. I think that's just me. I'm almost halfway through of that one. I'm really enjoying that in between the witchy and the magical stuff, we get little reminders that it's our time. I think there was a mention of COVID as well. And um, people have phones and things like that. And I just love it when it's very clearly set in the current day. But we still have the whole magic system. And it doesn't feel overdone. Because sometimes I feel when you have low fantasy. The concept of there also being a magical society is just simplified. And doesn't feel very real. I think this author is doing a great job. Um, with making things feel realistic. So far, Neve is definitely my favorite character. She is a vet. A heartbreaking scene in the beginning of the book, but I really love her character and I saw a good review that said that she is the main, main character of this book and I would have to agree with that. Yeah, I think this is a really promising series overall. I thought it was YA, but it's not. It's adult. So if I said it at the beginning of the vlog, I was wrong. It's an adult series. I think if I enjoy the rest of the novel as much as I'm enjoying it now, it will be one of the series that I will read at its release date because I am having a wonderful time and this could be a five star so that is really awesome. This vlog went from reading a difficult classic to reading fantasy which I do need a little bit of both in my life now that I have fantasy as a genre I gravitate towards. I did decide to split up my TBR like I mentioned earlier in this vlog and honestly I feel much chiller. Been neglecting this baby. Even though it's really good, I just don't gravitate towards getting back into the world of these horrible stories. I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> but I will at some point. I am a third of the way through and I do want to finish it this month and I'm sure I will. Those are my reading updates for now. I'm going to finish my cake. Probably watch on booktube because my watch later list is way too long. And then I will try and chill for the rest of the day. I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day or evening. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye! <laughs>